that one. That's what I'm taking. Is that Tim's one? Um, right, so this uh, Murray's email through. Um, apologies for leaving us in the thick of it all. Here's the following that we lost and used. He's given um, links through to TKI for the standards and resources for the assessment for 1.5 and 1.51 at level 1, 2, and 3. And these are also available on that feed drive. Um, and so that's the first, uh, first part is for those links to those standards. And the second part he was going to cover off was. Um, Cisco, the Cisco IT Essentials and how that, or how he sees that mapped across the curriculum uh, from the IT Essentials uh, curriculum at uh, level one and level two. Uh, so that's probably where we'll make a start uh, with the program that he had. Let me just see what he wrote here. Provided is that he's given us, uh, he's created a bit of an IT course. We need to get you to use, and he asked that if anyone wants to use that, uh, could you email him directly, or you see at rmu-ipsp.nz, uh, if you want access to it, and he'll roll it over for another year. It was going to close uh, January 31st, but he will continue that for another 12 months. Um, so in the P drive again, there's this copy of the text with the email, and you can uh, email Murray directly if you would like to have access to um, that IT course that he has set up. Um, I, I haven't seen it. I have no idea. What does it say? I don't know. I, it's Murray's. I have no idea. Well, we can find out by asking him, I guess. Send him an email if, uh, if you're interested. Uh, he was going to be talking about this, but uh, unfortunately he is not here. So. Um, 
his intention was to cover off the material um, that is in the Cisco course and wants feedback from us about that. Wants to find out what other schools are doing uh, this year with the 1.5 and 1.51 and then a bit of a discussion about uh, how it's gone, pros and cons, and perhaps following on from what John was talking this morning, if you were here for that one, um, about how the courses in Level 1 need to be scaffolded, supported by perhaps what you're doing in junior school, uh, as far as hardware and infrastructure goes. Uh, his last comment here was that his progress with the 1.5 1.51 at uh, Amanui had been minimal, and he's been disappointed. Uh, obviously, due to all the trust you reasons we have, very much student apathy. Uh, and his last comment there. Then he did end up back to the unit standards just to get some of the students. And the problem seems to be the requirement for literacy and communication skills, which have been barriers for him in using uh, those standards. Uh, but as uh, we've heard from uh, John this morning and from others that have looked at other assessment uh, with the standards. You don't necessarily have to write great huge documents in order to show the assessment has been met. And that's what he's left us, folks, um, on the P drive. Here are his links. Uh, so perhaps that one for level one, since that's what we're supposed to be looking. It's a really small one. So this size of a class and number of machines that you needed available for the students and you were able to use what the complete well, class? Well, I was 25 in the class one. Right. Because you have to put one room which you can see what class of machines. So if you hadn't done it that way, you'd need another set of 
25 computers that could be pulled apart and used? Or yes. So, well, for the pulling apart, I use some older computers. Uh, so they pull the part back, put it back together again, and they they can do that in 20 months. Uh, that's, if they have to write down the time they start to show it to me with everything. The motherboard's still on the, in the actual case. Um, the, uh, the process of the is still on there, but everything else, um, like the, the power supply out, the hard drives, the floppy drive, all that's in there now. And then they put it together, they turn it on and show me that the solution works. <laughs> yeah. I had one monitor that I actually used to use. Um, so I did kind of similar things. I actually went out and bought a whole class set of computers that they could take apart from Molten Media, which is a recycling company. Yeah. I think I got each machine for ten dollars, so it was pretty cheap. So it was supposed to come with CRT monitors as well, but I didn't have storage space for CRT monitors, so I was just quite happy for them to just pay the ten dollars to get the um, machine, mice and keyboard, and you know, power cords, and they just hooked it up to the school monitors. So they each had their own station that they could really take apart and install actual OS onto the hard drives mm -hmm. and go through the whole process and just use um, trial versions of Windows XP. Yeah. Anyone else who's done? Uh, yeah. Did you the uh, 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 yeah. What I'd like, I'd like to do that. We install that. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I, yeah. I just we had an old office that was converted to storage room for the entire commerce department. So I just said, hey guys, I just need all this floor space and just pile them up. And hopefully, well, actually the first day I got them, the very earthquake struck after I piled them all up. So the next time I made sure they were smaller piles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have something similar here with um, the pile of machines that the resource room. But we pulled it down now, not a not full class yet. It's only about between four. Um, but um, yeah, filling up the store with I was just thinking I was going to have to stagger the assessment because yeah. there's no way that I can find a store and just yeah. store all the... I've only, got, I've only got two that they can pull apart, so I was like, well, where the heck am I going to put any more? So I'm just going to stagger it and get them to do something else. Yeah. Something I can do. Not approved. I've done that one, but that's one, but with two, seven, eight, two, which is yeah. on a similar way. Yeah. Um, I've, I've got um, old PCs. And ripped all the pieces out and put them into boxes and you know, it's all messed up. Yeah. And we've got it's to lay lay them all up with post-it notes and on sack photographs and that which would come yeah. possibly with quite a lot in the same so they can pay a similar afterwards but they actually lay the pick out with, with um, post-its on nice. describing yeah. what the component part is mm -hmm. and then put them back together and it's perfectly worked. Bear in mind, they've done it for years before then. Yeah, yeah, so they they might have a few left. Yes, so I think the, the, the approach of having only a couple of machines that's all very really fine until there is static discharge and the practice path there. Yeah, I just don't have anywhere else to put them. No, no, exactly. So I can only get, I mean, they were, they were given to me. Yeah. So I'll just find someone else that doesn't want a couple of computers next time. Just have a supply of these things that are. Yeah, it's like the really. I was found that asking the students themselves, hey, you know, you've got family members or yourselves that you've got old computers you can get rid of, bring them in. Yeah. Um, so because the ones I got from multimedia were the Dell Optiflex, like desktop right. machines, so you couldn't really pull everything out of that. Yeah. And the donated machines I got from the students were actual like, mid-tower cases where everything could come out, which was yeah. great. And I and I knew some students like, yep, these are going to be my excellence and merit students. They can have those machines. Uh, but then I found Bromo. One of the machines, the motherboard didn't actually have any markings, so I couldn't actually find drivers for it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I think at the end of the year, I have got 10 hard drives which are totally stuffed. Yeah. So it's just going to keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Using up, but mind you, if you've got access to PCs for $10, yeah, that's good. And I mean, they're, they're really nice, they're really willing to throw in a whole lot of extra parts for me for free. So I've got some extra expansion cards, um, dead ones and good ones. So that was part of the whole repairing part. So I could put in the dead cards into the systems and get to figure out if it was a dead card and get to replace it. Um, any issues with the PCs that you're bringing into the school in terms of having them safety rated? I mean, our school, like every appliance is you know, tagged. They're supposed to be tagged and checked. The power cords. Yeah. Yeah. 
all have to be compliant before they can be used. So we can't bring other machines in. So yeah, so I'd probably like to use buildings which are there from the school. From the school that already has been Yeah. 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 So if you had a kid's problem, you need to bring it in for the Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, right, can um, I direct you to what Murray wanted us to have a little look at, which is um, this Cisco, Cisco work. Uh, if you jump on to, if you were on the PC there in the P drive, there's a uh, shortcut which will take you to a uh, web server here at school, which has got a local copy of the curriculum uh, on it. Does anyone else use the Cisco? No one else using Cisco? Nope. Okay, um, it's something that uh, Murray, Murray uses at uh, Avonside and we use here at Burnside, um, provided by Cisco. If you jump to that link, it'll take you through it. Oops, you can't see that. So uh, it's on the P drive. P drive, CIS, Burnside, P drive, infrastructure, Cisco. Yep. It's that one there, that's the top. Get your Cisco on oh. HP. Uh, Murray's little note that he's fired through um, shows a bit of an alignment between what the Cisco program here uh, has and his uh, all the chapters that correspond to um, a level one as he sees it, which is there. So from chapter, basically chapter 1 through chapter 7, uh, excluding 1.1 and anything after 1.8, uh, he uh, thinks matches quite nicely with level 1. And then chapter 8 and chapter 15 of that essentials course seems to uh, seem to uh, map across to level 2 for, uh, for what he said. So have a wee look. Um, that's the IT essentials. Um, so this is, a, this is part of the Cisco uh, Networking Academy. Um, I think it's uh, just Arnamui and uh, things like in Christchurch. Um, our lead academy is the uh, CPIT, Christchurch Polytechnic. And there's also um, up in Manukau, uh, provider up in Manukau is the lead academy. Um, but this is, uh, this is what we use for our, uh, for our uh, fundamentals. Uh, the way it's planned for next year for our uh, year 11s and year 12s is that this work will, uh, as it's learning it's self-paced, they're going to be doing this outside of class time. So they have to find uh, their own time to work through this material, um, but they'll be supported by in-class um, catch-up. Are just the lead academy for yes. Cisco, so uh, we're yeah. like a branch of. So of, do you have to pay for this? Yeah, yeah. Well, for this, for this, yes, you do. Um, yeah. You have to be a part of the academy system. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm not sure if it's very practical for us to look too far into it because uh, it's, uh, it's something that only Adam and uh, Ben are doing. So but, how do we go about finding out about it? Well, that's so uh, contact me through to um, Andy Blackmore at CPRT. Uh, and I'll, I'll find his details for you, but they're, uh, they're the lead uh, academy for uh, one of the two for New Zealand. So that's nothing to do with uh, Chris McCarthy? Uh, no, it's a different department. Uh, it's the electrotechnology department rather than the uh, computing department. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And he's in the uh, electrotechnology Because um, that's what I did with CPOT2 for about three years. A couple of students actually did it as a, an option or a course, but most of them I have been doing them as extras, like okay. uh, online and extra. But, um, so that the hardware, Indie well, the hardware and and yeah, 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 all those courses from TikTok. So this one would potentially be, have you seen both? Like, do you know which one? Um, I, no, I don't know what ones Chris McCarthy has. Um, I think they used to be offered here. Yeah. 
website before either uh, this year. Uh, but no, I don't know what uh, what Chris McCarthy's ones are. Uh, we can have a look though, I suppose, find out they might be there. I, you, I have done it like last year. We did it last year. The, um, the catch with this one is that um, you have to have someone trained and registered as an instructor at Cisco. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. that's the object. Yeah, for this one, um, yeah. you need to, need to be certified by Cisco to work as an instructor using this material. So where is that? Where? Where is this? Yeah. Uh, that you find. Jump to that P drive, which you've got access to. P drive? P, P, P drive, yeah. P drive, CIS, first side PD. Oh, yeah. And then jump into the infrastructure folder. Um, this just gives you a little look because this is a local copy of the curriculum that's here on the web server at school. I uh, just say all well, the instructor and what they're using. And jump to that first uh, top left link. So one assume you'd have to like, do the course yourself. Yeah, 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 that's, um, that's good the gotcha. But just to look at what's covered in terms of the material, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and Murray just wanted us to look and see that uh, chapters 1 through 7, uh, 1 through 8, lined up with, uh, 1 through 7, sorry, lined up with his, uh, what he thought would be right level 1. So uh, the A plus certification, what level would that be? So say it goes for the certification. I know it's a completely different system, but I'm trying to kind of have to generalise it to you know, one, two, three, one. Um, I got after one. you've done this, this this is the, through to chapter sixteen is then preparation for the A plus certification. I get the A plus test on all of this material. So that's some level one and some level two. I mean, so, yeah, I just trying to go around Bay Plus is probably level 2. Well, it goes beyond level 1. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't say certainly it was level 2. So, sorry, Bay Plus, you know, what level Bay Plus would be? Because Bay Plus is generally that's the introductory to any of the Microsoft certified or CNE, CNI tracks or even Cisco. But yeah, I think that's beyond because that's that's. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the only one. Is that, oh, can you actually get to that? Can you, you can actually see it? Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. But we'll make sure you can get to it.
Oh, yeah, cool. Make it a sense, Jerry. They get a bit sooner out different times if they've got a crisis. Oh, yeah, there's no... But the running of it, it's not the context so much. It's just listening to you again. It's outside modules and it's all in real time. And the kids come in and and then they pass it. It's all online. This is all done. It's all done online. Yep, it's all online. But it's not covering uh, the use of the computer. It's it's components of the computer, yes. uh, the networking of the computer, yes. the peripherals, the network printing, yes. um, and then that last little bit into a little bit of higher level networking, which does break the rule too. So it's not it's not like if the driver's license covers can the word process can you open no, no, the documents? No, it's not content. It's, okay. it's, it's the procedural setting up of it. You know, is where I'm coming from. Yeah. The fact that it's online, online. <coughs> it's the same program yeah. worldwide. Um, yeah. Completely. Quite highly recognised too, isn't it? Uh, yeah, because it moves on. It moves on from the this, um, beginning level, this essential and then discovery. There's four components to the discovery curriculum, and then after that, it goes to the CCNA, which is the network association and the networking professional. Um, once you get into industry, if it gets in that way. Um, but we, we only deliver the essentials and the discovery one, although we have certain passion for discovery two, which is the home of the business. We don't offer that one at all. Yeah. Uh, 
and, and uh, sort of a, a recognized training academy, get certification itself and pass at, it's like about 10 or 20 higher than the students need. Yeah. So it's quite high, um, high burden of, um, uh, of the pass rate. And then uh, for each of the courses that are offered, you have to do the same thing. You have to take a course yourself uh, at a training establishment, uh, pass the course at the instructor level, and then be certified to deliver it. And that's even if you're going to deliver it in the the instructor, so the students are coming back to you. Um, so it's not like you have to go and get a diploma or something before you can do it? Like, you know, no, no, just uh, <laughs> to become an instructor, you pass the instructor uh, orientation program and then take courses that you want to teach. If there's two you want to teach, you have to take those two courses yourself, yeah. pass them at the instructor level, and then and you're qualified to deliver them. It's the same way that Microsoft uh, operate their instructors, and the same way the Nobel operate their instructors. So yeah, I'll point out the costs. I think if John was there, you can grab him. Uh, so what the costs are, um, Murray may in fact even know that uh, if you wanted to email him directly um, to find out. But um, as we've seen, uh, people are doing other things that are working just as well. I mean, for ten dollars you can buy your own PC as long as you store it. Yeah, and it doesn't fall over in an earthquake. <laughs> So what is it? What is it covering? It's uh, if you look back to what uh, what it covers. Wrong one. Not discovering it. Essentials. So one through about chapter seven. So chapters one through chapter seven. I think that ones that cover off for level one. So up to installing printers and scanners, preventative maintenance techniques and troubleshooting. But if you have a little look, you get an idea of how this uh, how the system runs. There's little quizzes every now and then to to uh, test your knowledge before uh, before they give you the answer. So that's probably a little bit too in depth. I mean, that, that how a, how a solid ink printer delivers. To a page. That's a little bit more in depth for level one, can you say? Do you need to know the mechanics of that? Probably not. Uh, the, only, the other downside is it's, uh, it's Windows focused. Um, this one. I'll just interrupt for a second. Um, down the end room after this, there's a couple of students that have made one of those 3D printers. So if you want to have a look and see what the 3D printers are, they're only about $800. And the kids are going to sell them later on once they uh, perfect it. But it's the riprap one that you can buy and print off yourself. But they've got the full working model, which is cheaper than the um, the great big ones that you can buy. And they'll, they'll plug it in and run a demo. And they made me a pair of um, glasses earlier on in the year just sitting on the floor of my office, but uh, just sits there and does 3D printing. So if you're interested in doing like modeling or if they are making things for electronics or something later on, it's um, an interesting way to see the very beginning of the, I mean, when the, when the kids can put a 3D printer together, it's quite impressive. So if you've got some time, they're still setting up, but down in the very end room, the uh, non-ICT room, it's all sitting there and they'll run a little, um, a little quick print demo and we'll be printing, you can see it in action that it's, it looks complicated, but apparently all you do is you can open it from any modeling program, so it can be SketchUp or any graphic software, and then you just go print and it'll, um, it'll spit it out as a 3D image, but they'll be able to explain it. So just a quick question, do you have any idea of the costs for the Cisco program, for what is it's charged? Is it charged for the person or the site license? I don't think it's per student, is it? I don't think it's per student. Yeah. Um, I'm not too sure, actually. Yeah. Um, I don't remember yeah. seeing anything, paying anything for this year. Oh, it's pretty cool. That's pretty good. Why would you choose that then over just doing it online through CPRT, um, you know, hardly coming into Why would you choose that? Well, I think it's for my choice, oh, I can answer that one. Yeah. I mean, for my choice, this one is because it leads on to our further Cisco qualifications. For those students that did want to be that way, yeah. um, they, they can take the, the first the essentials and the discovery and then move on to the other discovery modules, which are, again are tied.
us back into CPIT because they offer those modules. Um, those, those, so that's a different department as you see. It's not the computing yeah. department, it's right. the technology department. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's not Chris McCarthy's um, area. Well, does that come under science or uh, Yeah, the electronics, the networking, all of the um, uh, computer engineering uh, in terms of the hardware and networking is, is electro technologies uh, domain. Uh, and the programming and uh, media come under computing. Yeah, it's separate, separate departments at CPIC. Yeah. Yeah, the electronics, uh, electrical, electrical trades, uh, networking, um, that's all electro technology. It's mm -hmm. their, their domain. Yeah, we had two students last year, no, two years ago, who went to that area instead of the computing area. So Oh, because they were going to do it by mistake. No, they deliberately went no, right. no, that right. way. Yep. They were interested in networking and, sure. and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So, mm. yeah, there's a there's a fair bit of crossover. Um, yeah. I know that sometimes they offer a course in the computing and it's run by the electro technology department. Okay. So as part of the degree in diploma, yeah. the, the networking course is actually run by electro technology. Mm. So really? The thing we did being with because if I take the carpet line or the computing line, I could get still be to the certificate to the diploma to the degree as well, but it's a different focus in the way, isn't it? Yeah, yes, like the year three course would be yeah, quite different. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 Uh, right, so well, where do we get from here? Well, what's, um, what's in level two then of um, the oh. infrastructure stuff? Okay, well, so, so, according to Murray, level two uh, is chapters eight, networks, security, and 15, uh, networks and advanced networks. So, uh, chapter eight, fundamental networks. So there we go, so I can get into the LAN, and that's looking away as well. So that's level three. And here's where it starts getting specific and wanting you to use certain uh, Cisco equipment. I mean, there's a Linksys, uh, Linksys router. And so they'll have specific hardware. There we go, that's their, that's their Cisco. So it is tailored yeah, towards. That is a little close with the system. Yeah, well, that's exactly yeah, that. That there is uh, it's showing only you know, pictures of their uh, their equipment. So there's their Lexus router, their uh, DSL. Uh, but um, that's. But that's a set up. It shows how the interface there is generic. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, but the things like the um, the the IOS and the command line. Configuration um, that is very specific. Uh, obviously, it's I can't, the. I can't see the teacher. I can't see the kids No, well, as I said, we uh, this material uh, we take the. Going back, we take the uh, discovery that discovery one was at the Edinburgh program. This year, so uh, so we're, we're sort of quite about middle one there. Um, it's yeah, it's pretty full on with this one, the discovery, uh, even that first one, discovery one. Um, it's a lot of uh, manual configuration of using scripts for router configuration and creating your own default routes. So it's but there's a lot of stuff in here. And how much do we teach them for level one? Well, as I said, as Murray said, it's uh, just the essentials and chapters 1 through 8, oh, 1 through 7. 1 through 7. 1 through 7. I'll go back to this little uh, document here. Um, 1 through 7, so the whole lot. Not on that email, I'll just find this email. Because just the introduction to computers is going into. So Huge 
chapter 1.2 through 1.8. Level 1. And then chapters 2 through to 7. So not all of chapter 1. Level 1 is 1, 2, 3, 7. Yep. Chapters 1 to chapter 7, but not all of chapter 1. Starting at 1.2 and going to 1.8. Mm-hmm. So the best work for did he use this himself or uh, yes, I mean, yes. But the, the kids went back to you so But as he said, he said he said he was uh, wanting to do that. But uh, sorry, then we when he went to use the achievement standards, uh, the progress had been minimal and he went back to unit standards. Mm-hmm. So I wonder whether it's a literacy requirement of the achievement standards. Um, because I mean, I mean, so many kids say two, seven, nine, ten. Yeah. And, yeah, absolutely. The work that gets out of the computer, putting it back together. And, you know, yeah, there's a lot less practical. It doesn't stop. Yeah. And then just demonstrate the knowledge. Um, that kind of. I mean, there's, 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 there's a heap of reading. There's so much reading um, through all of this. Uh, it's, it's, it's huge. Now, where are we checking? So you talk about the ripping apart the fun stuff. Um, well, here it is with you know, a huge amount of uh, reading material uh, to, to digest as well. So in terms of literacy requirements, you're quite high just in terms of the reading. Never mind then having to turn around and, and write, uh, write or demonstrate the uh, standard. Um, Knowledge. Yeah. It'll be more interesting to see than it gets. So yeah, it's um, it is. It's it's very it's very wordy. Um, but it's self-paced. Uh, and I guess we're gonna find out next year how motivated the students will be to complete it. Um, because it's going to be in their own time, uh, a lot of the a lot of the uh, the reading and the um, not taking their own, it's going to be their own time as to uh, how how they keep up with progress. Um, different from what we did for the year 13 this year, where it was uh, was done in class over uh, over two terms, over one semester. The discovery one was covered, uh, but we just don't have class hours to be able to do that. To using this material in that way, uh, using class time. So I guess you have to be uh, specific about what you're doing in class. I mean, if you've got your own hardware to pull apart, you get, get some hands on that way, uh, get some photographic evidence, get some video evidence, um, whatever you can to show the students can actually uh, perform the task. Um, I mean, ideas? What, 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 else, what else can you do? Can't really do it virtually. So it does require hands on for the assembly. For the assessment um, for 1.5, when I just video the whole class doing it, so to set up a video recorder up high and down. And we just leave it to it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I had set up, I had to play students apart from being students. <laughs> yep. And then I just ripped all the computer parts apart, set them up neatly, had their names on there. And I had, I had a teacher because I had three deaf students in the class. Mm-hmm. And we both had a camera each, so they put up their hand if they needed a camera picture before they had the OS installed. Once they had the OS installed, any um, evidence would be from a screenshot. Right. So it's the same like, for example, going in the device manager is saying there are, no, um, there are no hardware without drivers installed. The, 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 the. Just take screenshots of it. Yep. Yep. There you go. Good, good assessment. Yeah, just Less work, less work, well, no, lots of work to set it up, but uh, you can run a class and do the whole lot and just, and just screenshot or take photos of uh, what you need as you went. Um, or if the, if, the, if the students had a camera uh, on, on the actual like webcam on the classroom device, or record themselves as they're going, saying what they're doing, and, uh, and, uh, and turn the camera and show what's happening and take, take a record themselves of what they're doing. I don't know, it's a, it's a tough one. It's, uh, it's tough. I don't know what, what we're going to do in terms of ripping apart hardware next year.
year. Um, because we hope that some of the machines get replaced and there's another pile of ones that we can get from other classrooms that have reached their end of life and then use those. Um, right, so that's, that's what Murray provided us to have a look at. Uh, useful, I'm not sure. Um, it's good to hear the different approaches and different ways of getting the um, assessment task done. Sure, yeah. That are, again, all provided there in the P drive. Uh, there's the uh, links to level one through on the CKI. And whip on down to the technology. So here we go, 1.5. Um, so what's the um, the structure? What's the point five? Uh, at a 1.5, 1.5, 1, uh, level one. There's the one point uh, five, one point five zero. And do they tell us what they consider to be the common components? a recommended resource, a basic digital infrastructure or computer system. You see the level two is the structure one. Or merit, the, the student should be able to explain the layers of the test for IP. Because mm -hmm. level one is local area, uh, level two is local area network. Yeah, yeah, just, uh, it's quite a step up, isn't it, from where it used to be. Mm -hmm. Yep, for level two, uh, it has to be, you have to be um, fully working knowledge of local area networking protocols, uh, topologies. Uh, it's, it's a whole lot of stuff that we had this year at level three, but now dropped down to level two. So that's re the recommended hardware, as long as you have uh, some extension or expansion cards. That uh, will work with the motherboard, house supplies case, CPU, although, uh, uh, yeah, don't uh, often leave the CPU in place, don't you know, rip those out. And what would it say for resource B, characteristics and components in terms of interoperable trade off efficiencies and costs? Being able to compare USB 1, 2, and 3 as an example. And, right, and the assessment task, uh, you will note, says uh, the writing includes the writing. So for excellence, let's have a look at excellence in knowing basic computer systems. We're talking uh, about so you're saying that the assessment must be in writing? Well no, just as for example, the writing. Yeah. Uh, but just giving it as for example. 
but I even had a look there at the, um, the step up from achieved merit to excellence. Purpose of a network card for achievement. Uh, for merit, they need to be conversing in terms of the transmission speeds of the network component. And then for excellence, they need to show that they can differentiate between Cat5 and Fiber in terms of distances um, before repeating uh, the signals required. So they need to know a little bit about uh, the land technology anyway, um, or this media, uh, transmission media. That's quite a uh, Students uh, have got a grasp on uh, on material, won't you? But still, my concern comes down to to the writing requirement. Uh, that's what has held back a lot of the thirteens that I've had this year. Is that they haven't had um, the ability to be able to express in writing their understanding as well as they could on video. Can you handle the video submissions? Yeah, it's a step up. 
because the because the level two is dealing with the local area network, there's uh, the information that they need to be able to gather, all those networking concepts and components, different connection technologies, access control and using Ethernet, the Ethernet uh, protocols, networking topologies and models, and IP addressing and schema. So they need to know IP addressing uh, class IP classes. Uh, that's yeah, that's that's a thorough understanding of local area networks. What's the IP addressing? Does anybody know this? V4, V6? You would want V6. V6 is just for your mind, I think. For my mind, it's for the teachers and the kids. I'm trying to explain the headers on V6. With the mathematical challenge as well, you think you're a seer, but that's going to be throwing your hands in. Yeah, yeah. you did Yeah, I think it would be a little fun for the teachers to get to be six. Which one is this? So there would be the task to write a report and written discussion. So. But then, I mean, I guess if you were looking at this, if you had, I mean, you could. You could say there is the six and it can allow this, you know, giving in the more other possibilities of addresses. I don't think they need to be more than six or two of them, but it's I think the other main concern of mine with the level two is the practical part of the part two and part one. How, because if you're administrating a local area network connection, does that mean each student has to have at least two to three computers to show that they can administrate it? How would you do an assessment for that? You can't have them all linking all your computers together and then raise your own lands and try to interfere with each other. And I don't have hardware enough machines for them to virtualize it. Mm. See, that's where the Cisco, that, that Cisco one allows for that to allows that to be used as a dozen year later. The emulation of a local area network. Yeah, you could, you could get a small switch and use the administration on a small. Switch. Mm. Um, so, but you can just tell them, so you don't need that. You know, you can bank to tell them that they can do that. No, that's what I did with the, with the um, Cisco one. They had a, a, a small uh, switch, they had a Cisco router, and they had a PC. They had to get PC working, uh, connect it through the switch. Uh, uh, and to the router, <coughs> and you'd be able to um, tell me, set up com, uh, communication, serial communication, and uh, to the router, and then also be able to connect the network to the router. So they did build it and make it all work, and show that they could actually get to the router and, uh, and, and open up the iOS and program it. So that was, that was for that first year for the more, uh, for the Ethernet. You had that first year. Uh, was, no, was, uh, there were four sets. There were eight to sixteen in the class. There were four sets of gear, and it was groups of four, and they wanted to be able to show they could do it. Um, but yeah, that, that involves having four routers. Um, so they could uh, switch, be able to switch, uh, and they could all use the same one. Um, but yeah, four routers needed for that. But that's the Cisco kit that we had to have as part of the Cisco kit. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The, 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 they make use the, um, the Cisco, Cisco equipment. So it's Lexus routers and uh, Lexus files routers. Mm. Yeah, that, that, is, that is a big step up, isn't it? But, uh, to be honest with you, it's far too big a session over the line of classes. Yeah. Uh, I know that all these things are very virtuous and numerous and challenge. Mm. You know, so it's like 1.50, now I've been caught that. Yeah. So it's 1.51. What are you doing? It's 1.51. It's the equal practical. Oh, the practical one. Yeah. Demonstrate. Yeah. Demonstrate is 1.0.
to whether they need physical access to those uh, those components. So you have to have modems and routers and switches, wireless devices. Phone server. Yeah, phone server. Oh, oh, it's free. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, as long as you don't mind every picture looking, you know, the links is the links is. There we go. What's that one? Well, that's a, that's a Cisco owned product. Our know, links is wireless router. So uh, everything, every time they put a product in, it's always yeah, a Cisco product. So it's very narrow focus. You know, you don't see. Uh, you know, <laughs> So do you say No, this is this is the Cisco program. I'm just uh, looking through so I can find where it links through. So, so they got a virtualized yeah. network where you can make configuration yes. changes and see how yep, so bring in your own uh, bring in your own routers, put plug them all in, put the put the uh, uh, addressing system in place and uh, then test it. See, that sort of thing is useful, but I'm not sure if it's useful for the Cisco system. No. Um, okay, so it's full of interactive things like this, but you can see it's the same thing you can show the uh, router in your own. Well, that's not a good idea of our resources. Yeah, I mean, I'm also sure it's a good idea. Well, I so do you do that in on our own? Do you let the kids go through these on, on their own as self Not yet, we haven't. Next year we are. This year it was year 13th that did it. And it was uh, in class time. And it was fairly tightly controlled. We spent a good part of two semesters, uh, two terms, one semester, um, going through it because we were doing bits of this and looking at some hardware. Uh, pulling some things apart, so you know, just the whole two uh, terms was filled uh, with this uh, program and, and hands-on hardware. Um, but next year, it's coming down.
down into year 12, into an already full program, and it's been booted sideways. So because it can be uh, run from any PC, that's what's going to happen. It's outside of the classroom. The students are going to have to get from this uh, by themselves. That's going to be their homework. So once you finish the home part of this, the students can't have access to outside the school Yep. Yeah. So yeah, they just jump straight on to uh, Cisco.com. And there's a link for the academy. They click on the login, and they're away. Yeah. So they just need an internet connection, PC, and off they go and log in. And log in, and away they go. Um, the the testing um, components are controlled. They need to be either well. You have to indicate to Cisco whether they're going to be cropped and invigilated in a classroom, uh, or they're going to be done uh, without supervision. So you, need, you select how you want to run the assessment. So for the year 13 to this year. Um, they were all done in the class slot. This is the assessment for chapter 3. Everyone can log off and you enable the assessment, they will take the assessment at the same time. Um, and that will have to happen again next year. The assessment task will have to happen in the class. Yeah, they have to, they're not using the materials, uh, not allowed access to the internet uh, while they're doing the assessment. So it has to be done in the class. Um, the reality is the system certification is probably more beneficial to them. But then how many, how many of the students are going to go on and want or need that first Cisco step to go further? I mean, out of how many years have we been teaching it here since the College of Computing came back? So we're talking six years. Um, there will be maybe half a dozen students who have gone on to, to do the Cisco qualifications. So that's six students over six years. It's not a lot. Um, you, well, talk to each other you, you can, yeah. up until March 31st next year, the Cisco Discovery or any of the chat, any of the um, four discoveries or um, Explorer tests can be used for credit inclusion, but it's only valid until 31st of March next year, and it's generic credits for the three.
Francisco really is very high level stuff. It's, it's professional training. It's what the Polytechs are offering if you're doing it at school. So it's. Um, We've just been looking at the at the level two, at the the um, step up to level two, and the requirements for knowledge of local area networking uh, that, that matches what the Cisco is offering yeah, here yeah. for the Discovery One, yeah. which we offered at year thirty this year, which is now down to level two. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a huge yeah, yeah. Uh, breadth yeah. of subject. Yeah. I mean, I'd be addressing schemes and mm -hmm. subheading classes. It's like, yeah. wow. If if kids could offer be offered a extramural course or something that they could do online in their own time and they were really well driven Cisco people. They're going to do it anyway. That's so to be self funded, it? Probably. Yeah, well, it could be or uh, how you, I mean, that's what we're going to have to look at and work out. But yeah. if those kids were, uh, we've had loads of kids that have gone through Cisco here that um, really wasted their time. They're not Cisco kids and it's really hard to explain to kids that the last person that you want running a network that's controlling everything is someone that's like only there half the time or isn't really, you need those people that are live it and breathe it. There's not many of them, but the ones that are, if we can provide a real pathway for them that's sort of un, uh, encumbered by people that are there filling a course and thinking that hardware is so that they can build a computer and play games with. It's, um, that's, the, uh, that's the battle that so then it becomes a bit difficult to actually be offering the two avenues of GMC next year was down there. Because the computer line or that line, the engineering type line. But I mean, maybe what we'll look at is if we can identify the real potential Cisco kids, if they can do the Cisco course and just have a like a nominated CIS course that they're doing, but they don't attend it. They just go to the library and work on Cisco in that period. Maybe that's something we're doing. I don't know. Well, that won't be yeah. for us next year because the ones that are doing this, mm -hmm. the only ones that will finish it will be the motivated ones mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. Because yeah. it's in their own time, the yeah. yeah. ones that are going to give their own time to do it will be. So you can look at the anyway. student profile and perhaps this is really going to be in touch with you. Need the faculty to cross the curriculum to find out, you know, which are the really good students focused on all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we're offering it up to all the year 11s who take uh, the digital, uh, digital technologies programming because it's it's going to be off there as long as all the programming was, because it's programming infrastructure. Yeah. So it will be bolted on to all the programming students who take at year 11. And they don't have to take it. Um, well, they're not. They're not they're not individually charged. No, no, we we just suck it up. Yeah. 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 That's what we're for. I'll, I'll flick an email to Andy Blackmere and see if they uh, can let me know um, the costing, uh, or, or what sort of pathway there is, or what sort of ability there is to, to offer um, to other schools. Uh, if you know, you might have only one or two students that want to do it, but uh -huh. uh, if it's one or two students that are really keen uh -huh. and want to do this alongside what you're offering, yeah, exactly. uh, maybe there's a way of doing it. It's really, It's what they offer at uh, CQT anyway, so yeah. the, the, the year one um, course uh, uh, at CQT in electric technology cover this anyway for mm -hmm. their um, certificate, technician certificate, mm -hmm. um, this, the discovery, um, or the explorer, explorer, which is the companion course. Um, and then they, they could potentially have a few papers when they start, they've already got a few under their yeah, yeah, well, if they were going to head that way anyway, um, the site's saying, well, okay, we can cater for you while you're here until you head off, head off in that direction. Um, if you want to um, get a preview of this um, 3 French Air Force. Yeah, I can't think we've got anything else to, to cover. Uh, it's very is scant. It for this for this <laughs> no, no, it's raining for the same thing, is it? Well, pretty much. I mean, level two, we all went to one. Level two, you can't make the same selection. It's like, you know, you sort of look down and see what's going on in the junior school. This is important as well. My biggest thing was it was hard to make a run on level two infrastructure. How? Yeah, because I'm not sure yet. Well, that's 
yeah, where we do it, as a, we just say, well, we just have, we, we can't, even in this school, we can't do it totally in house. So we go to Cisco that way um, by necessity. I mean, we don't have, we don't have a huge lab of machines to pull apart. We all be so, you know, I don't think. We could probably go and buy some. Ten bucks, ten bucks a pop. Hey, that's all right. I was. Uh Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think. Did I push the right button? No, probably not. I'll figure it out in a second. Yeah, could I? I hit the top one, which is. I don't no. Know. That was the.